I'm Nana Fatola for Biz News and with me I have Jordan Hill Lewis, of course the mayor of Cape Town with me, who's just launched an ease of doing business index to drive economic growth and job creation in the city. Jordan, you said in your news conference you want to be the city that is the most friendly to the business environment. Um, how's Cape Town going to do that? We want to be the easiest place to do business uh, in Africa. That is our ambition and we are dead set to achieve it. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is by holding ourselves publicly accountable on a set of index indicators, which we have developed over the last months. And those are all indicators which are internal to the city. In other words, things that we can control entirely ourselves. And if they are not going well, we have no one else uh, to blame, no one else to hold responsible other than ourselves. So, of course, businesses would immediately say, well, uh, load shedding is not on there and uh, crime is not on there and logistics, the performance of the Cape Town Harbour is not on there. Those are many uh, excellent points and all related to ease of doing business, of course, but we are looking at holding ourselves accountable for what we uh, have full and total responsibility and control over, things that are endogenous to the city's ecosystem. So that's what this uh, ease of doing business index is about. Uh, we are... we. Alongside this index, we also launch a annual survey of the Cape Town business community where we get that feedback loop as to how we are doing. So we are not marking our own homework. We are not saying we're doing great and, and look how well we are performing. We are actually asking small businesses and businesses themselves as to whether they find it easier uh, to do business in Cape Town or not. And that's how we will measure progress against those indicators. Well, let's just go through those indicators. Um, can you just list them and we'll, we'll see, as you said, that's the only thing that Cape Town can actually do something about, which is not load shedding. As I said before we started, I asked one businessman, okay, about these, and he says, I don't know about that. I just want to sort load shedding out. So, um, But can, can we go through the 10 and let's just see how you can improve on what's already out there? So the several of them relate to the built environment. Things like obtaining land use approval, obtaining building plan approval, getting a new connection to our water meet, our water grid, to our electricity grid, uh, getting rate clearance certificates issued, uh, the process to obtain a transfer or a, a lease on publicly owned land or publicly owned buildings. And then there's several that are related uh, more broadly than that. Things like getting a business license for a new restaurant or place where uh, food is served, a, a food safety license. Uh, for informal traders, very important, the ease of obtaining an informal trading permit at a trading bay, a designated trading bay inside the city. Uh, and then a, a very important one related to the digitization of city services. We want all city services, whether it be getting a uh, vehicle license renewed or paying your municipal bill or uh, and so many other touch points as well. Uh, we want those to be digitized, uh, available ideally on a cell phone so that anyone can, uh, can access them or complete them at any time of the day and for that digital experience to be super easy and user-friendly. Uh, so those are the indicators that we've set out. So can Cape Town extinguish itself? Because I looked at the regulatory framework, you know, and how South Africa is viewed um, when you measure South Africa against the economies in the world. Are we now 84 out of 190 economies on how business friendly we are? And we basically dropped 41 places from, I think, 2014. Yeah. So would it be possible just for Cape Town, would that be enough if Cape Town improves itself? You know, would 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 there then be this by this difference between what's happening in Cape Town and what's happening in Johannesburg? Is that what you're trying to do to let Cape Town stand out and say, "Listen, the country might have this rating, but in Cape Town, we're doing our thing." Exactly, uh, you've got it. You've got it right. But it's not just about competing with other uh, South African cities, but African cities. Uh, you know, when I was elected, uh, the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index was still in place. Uh, as you know, that's now fallen away, which is why we needed to develop our own index. 
Uh, the uh, Cape Town was not the easiest place to do business on the African continent, continent, and South Africa was not the easiest country in Africa to do business. Now that is shameful. Uh, that is that is totally unacceptable for our country, and we are going to try and put that right here. Again, that does not mean we can address every ease of uh, business issue. Uh, there's lots of other national issues that need addressing. Visas is one that often comes up. But uh, but where we have responsibility, we can do something about it, and, and this is what we are going to do. And so uh, I respect- think you're right. It will, it will lead to that kind of bifurcation. Uh, we, in many respects, we already see that. It, you know, Cape Town has just overtaken Gauteng as, the, as uh, approving the most building plans. That's never happened before uh, until now, uh, approving the highest value of building plans. So there's a huge bifurcation in property investment. There's a bifurcation in property values. Uh, and we want there to be a bifurcation in business investment as well because we, we, we want to address unemployment and get people out of poverty. That's ultimately what this is all about. So how, how has this been received by the business community? Have you spoken to people? We launched it today and the business community was present. The Chamber of Commerce, uh, Accelerate Cape Town, uh, a, uh, it, we were very pleased to have the South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry there as well. Uh, and uh, lots of other business uh, community representatives, and the and the reception has been incredibly positive. A huge amount of positive feedback of, around our effort to be accountable, to be open about what's not going well, but where there is much improvement needed, uh, and to put that all in the report, what's and all, and to start this process of having a proper annual feedback loop, where where uh, b- the businesses themselves tell us whether they're seeing progress or not. So we discussed load shedding and the fact that that is sort of uppermost in businesses' minds. How are your plans to, to proceeding to get Cape Town basically off the grid? They're proceeding well. Of course, sitting here as we are talking now in stage six load shedding, I wish I could make them go much faster. I want, uh, I want the load shedding finished now. Uh, it is absolutely killing our national economy. Uh, it is strangling our country. But, uh, but you know, these things, there's no silver bullets. It, it re- requires building new power projects and slowly connecting them to the grid as they come online. And that takes time. But we are, we are watching that timeline. We are trying to accelerate it as fast as we can. And we are still confident that we will be uh, the first major city that, that stops load shedding uh, in South Africa or at least protects residents from at least four stages of load shedding. Uh, by by the end of my first term in office. So do you uh, okay? Is that is that your timeline by the end of your first term in office? Yes, yeah, that's right. So you said we 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 said that we want to protect by uh, protect residents from four stages of load shedding. So that prior to this year, uh, stage four was was very rare and, and accounted for you know ninety seven percent of load shedding was was stage four or less. Uh, in recent months, we've seen it escalate quite often to stage six. Uh, but but you know we think that if we can protect residents from four stages of load shedding, we will be able to say goodbye to the vast majority of load shedding. And remind us when your term of office ends. Well, we we've said we've got three years to go. So uh, by you know by early late 2025, early 2026, we want those projects to be online. So we can't speak to you without asking you about the DA because uh, you sorted for the next three years, but there seem to be a lot of. Um problems in some of the other areas where you have coalitions. Um, what is your comment on that? Well, coalitions are extremely unstable, unpredictable, uh, tricky things to manage, particularly when you're dealing with uh, small parties who seem only interested in what they can get out of the next deal, rather than setting up a principled alternative government. Uh, so, you know, the coalitions are undoubtedly a permanent feature of South Africa's political future. We have to get used to them. We have to find a model, a management model that works. But that is going to be based on some people sticking by some foundational agreements, sticking by some foundational principles and not flip-flopping all over the place every time there's a better offer or a competing offer even. Uh, so it, there's going to be periods of great instability in the future. We may even have a national coalition after next year's election. Uh, in fact, I hope we do. As unstable and uncertain as that future is, it would still be better than another five years of the ANC. 
So um, if we can get back to business, why should people, oh, well, apart from, you know, the beauty and everything, why should people see Cape Town as a place where they should put their businesses rather than Gauteng, which is um, the business hub of the country? We believe that, and, and our commitment is that Cape Town is going to be the easiest place to do business in Africa. Uh, we are committed to resolving those other problems that are killing business at the moment, like load shedding. Uh, we have a credible, publicized plan to do so, and we are happy to be held accountable to those plans. That's why we publish them uh, warts and all. We say these are the areas where we are not doing well enough, where we need to improve, but we want to be accountable because we see ourselves as a globally competitive city, not just a South African competitive city, but globally competitive. So we want to benchmark ourselves, uh, and we want to we want to be held accountable in that way. Yeah, I um, so are you are, will people be able to go into a website or where you know to see how you're progressing and how yes. you know how they can access? Yeah, is yeah, there going we'll, to be a website up that people can access? We'll have an online dashboard at uh, www.investcapetown.com, and uh, we'll also be doing the annual survey as well, which we'll publish the results of. Okay, thank you, Jordan Hill Lewis, thank the you. mayor of Cape Town. Thank you very much. 